song. Hey guys, today I'm getting a really head start on the day. Well, I have to if I ever want to have a chance of eating any food here because every day at around five o'clock, vendors gather to sell everything from fish balls to soups to, to freshly made dumplings. So I know it's early, but you know, early warm gets the bird. I mean, early, let's just go eat. Oh, look at this. It's a fish dumpling. Fish dumpling? Yeah. Oh, great. Look at that. It's fresh. Yeah. Ooh, love my dumplings in the morning. First thing you notice, it doesn't really look like a traditionally shaped dumpling. It kind of looks like a cross between a shawmai and, you know, just, just a little food mountain. Let me cut into this. Wow, okay. So this is literally a pretty solid fish ball just wrapped in dough. And the vendor's actually saying that they make everything fresh, including fish cake here itself. It comes with a little bit of spice. Mmm. It doesn't really taste, taste like a fish cake or, or fish ball. It's not very bouncy. It's actually quite dense. Actually, wow. That fish cake feeling's got a lot of flavor. What I like about this is the dough, it, it's really not that thick. This thing is like 90% filling. A couple of these will definitely fill you up. Thank you, sir. This is the fried momo. First time I'm ever eating this at a food size stall. This is a pretty traditional uh, Tibetan dumpling. The dough is much thicker on this dumpling. This part right here was actually quite thick and I wish it was a little thinner, but the filling itself looks like some cabbage, some minced pork meat. That's favored quite well. Tastes like, um, actually, that's quite a good dumpling. The filling itself is good and the skin around the filling, that's pretty nice and thin. I think this would have been really, really, really awesome right outside the fryer. But for now, I'm just gonna eat it like, like that. All right, one more thing I wanna try here. Thank you, look at this. Freshly steamed chow chow bao. So you call this red meat ball. Yeah. Whew. That is piping hot. Ooh, look at it. Oh, wow. I think I want to call this a red meat bun as well because, man, I mean, this is like bloody red. Oh, yeah. Wow. I love the texture of the dough. The bun, superbly fresh and bouncy and fluffy. And look at this. It's like a little bun trampoline. I wish there was more of a, a filling to dough ratio, but the pork is savory and sweet goes well with the slightly sweet flavor of the bun. That's why I love the spicy sauce they give you on the side. Not a bad start to this morning. Let's see what else they got here. All right, this place, they sell fish ball soup and pork ball soup. Everything smells really subtle. Like, there's really not much spices. This guy's putting some uh, spice in his soup, so it's gonna do the same. I actually kind of really welcome a little subtle flavor because Everything I've eaten so far is, I mean, I love my flavor, but it's good to have just a bit of a break sometimes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It has a bit of a vinegary and, and a lot of spice element to this. That actually made this really, really good. And the fish ball, ooh. Wow, okay, this thing is ridiculously bouncy. I mean, I'm barely, it's like cutting, trying to cut through like a little rubber band ball right now. Oh, I didn't expect that to be this bouncy and good. It's almost like borderline a, a mochi ball. Tons of nice pork flavor. And with the soup, mm, I think what they did here, they, they, they mixed the meat together with some sort of uh, really bouncy flour. And you can see bits of vegetables throughout this meatball here. I mean, when I was cutting into it, I knew this thing was gonna be bouncy. And when I bit into it, I thought it maybe break apart just a little bit. Wow. That's Thing is bouncy down to the last bite. Really good meatball. The fish ball, same subtle broth. Add a little spice. Mm. Magically transformed. The fish ball itself, again, cut through. Really bouncy texture. The fish ball is not as elastic -y as the pork ball. I mean, it's good. It's got a nice bounce, got a nice chew, like a nice mouthfeel to it. I like the clean, fresh flavor. But as I'm eating this, my mind is still on the pork ball. I mean, I kind of can't get this thing out of my mind right now. We have, we, we have something going on here that's, that's, that's pretty special. So if I had to choose, my heart's for the pork ball. All right, one, one last thing I gotta try. 
I didn't want to do this this early in the morning, but I saw it and I couldn't resist a bowl of what looks like pork organ soup. We definitely need the help of the chilies here right now. So inside, you got the pork intestine, one of my favorites. You got the small intestine, not one of my favorites because this thing usually packs a, a really pungent odor because it's really hard to completely clean this. Oh, it's like a little pork intestine pasta noodle. If they clean this really well, this will be really good tasting. If not, let's just hope they clean it well. I can't really, I can only make out a little bit of the, uh, of the odor from the intestine when I'm smelling it. Let's start with uh, what I'm more comfortable with. Mm. I love the pork intestine, which is very snappy and crunchy. And that piece cleans perfectly. No pungentness to it whatsoever. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. This will either make or ruin my breakfast. They did good. This intestine is cleaned really, really well. Seriously, you can't taste any foulness to it whatsoever. It's just a beautiful, chewy, slightly crunchy of the intestine. You know what's gonna make this better? Let's invite the meatball to the party. We'll mix in a little bit, add a little piece of the stomach lining. That was a good part. Like I said, this is really clean tasting. It's gonna be awesome and it's gonna make my breakfast. I absolutely love that. Some of you might not really be into organs or intestine. I love this thing. All right, here's the thing. This market is supposed to be pretty good on Sundays. Today, there wasn't that many food vendors. So the last thing I got is, uh, is a piece of fried dough, or Chinese, we call it yotel. And uh, it's the Indian variation. Look, it's really small. I mean, but in Chinese breakfast, you gotta have one of these things. This tastes like a much denser cousin of the Chinese yotel. Like the Chinese fried dough is fluffier, but this has the same flavor. It's still delicious. I think this market is probably the most laid back market I've been to in India so far. I don't know whether it's because it's, a, it's on a weekday. There's not that many people. It's pretty wide, it's pretty spread out. A lot of people selling vegetables, flowers. The people are really chilled, pretty friendly. The, the air smells like food. That's a shame. I wish I was here when more food vendors are here, but as of right now, I'm gonna eat my Yotel and we're gonna go look for more food. Getting a coconut, and, and, and this guy asked me if I want one that's sweeter or one that has more flesh. And he can tell by just tapping on it. So, this guy's the coconut whisperer. Thank you. Mm. Ah, refreshing. Guys, this is really interesting. At first I was drinking this, and I thought, you know, this coconut water's a little slightly bitter, a little sour, but then I realized it's fizziness. This is like a coconut soda. This is awesome. Mm. Coconut soda without being a soda. That's like everyone's dream. All right, we ended up grabbing some uh, beef curry and mutton liver. Uh, actually, I have a couple of my friends that uh, we just met today's place. This is John and Sandra. Hello. They're, they're shy, so it's, it's just going to be us. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Tandoori roti. Beef curry. Wow. Oh. <coughs> oh, wow. First time the chili took me by surprise in India. This might be the spiciest curry I've had in India. Wow. This, ooh. It's like a volcano. And this is the first time I'm having beef in India. Really good. I like the smoothness of the beans, but wow, that heat factor. Man, this is, I mean, I've had spicy food in India. I haven't had one yet that, that really, really lingers in your throat, you know, that kind of heat. It was pretty awesome though. Beside the tandoori roti, we got some pretty, which are these little 
crispy, flaky little things. Oh man, look at these little air pockets. Mm. That on its own is awesome. Look how flaky and crispy. This is slightly chewy. There's spices on the inside as well. This is really good on its own already. I think this works even better than the rachi because the crispy and flakiness of this thing, it, it's just perfect for this curry. Uh, I think I found the source of the heat. Look how many little chilies are on this. Just one little serving of beef curry. There are all these little chilies. That's my type of curry. And this is the mutton liver curry. Wow, that is extremely organy. Look at this. I think this is like a massive piece of liver. It's awesome. The spice is what it does. It takes the bad organy flavor of that liver almost completely away. It's just left with that subtle flavor of, of liver. By the same time, like when you're chewing it, the liver breaks down and you're getting all that different spices that's, that's in there. And then the spices and liver, it goes hand in hand. By the way, this is ridiculous. And what I also like about this is that you can kind of, you know, it's like a little spaceship, right? Kind of open the top. Then what we're gonna do, build it on the spaceship, take a piece of liver, welcome that on board, close it up. That's crazy. Oh yeah, you got a nice taste of the beef, beautiful spices, the heat. Then you got this amazing piece of liver right there. Not bad for breakfast. And what's great is that we're just getting started today. So more food, more foods are coming. All right, the next place we're going to is for some wonton noodle soup. I haven't had wontons in a while and I haven't had noodle soup in a while, so this is pretty exciting. Now, going there, it's kind of hard to, hard to find. Like I had to go through this big construction area. Oh, and by the way, I had a little accident. Hit my head. I think actually a dumpling bit me because I'm, I'm growing a bun right here, like the size of this. Anyway, let's go. This is a very hard way to get to some wonton noodles. We are going to Chinatown, so some of the doors, the houses, they do look like things you might find in China. And guys, this is my buddy David. Hey guys. Um, David, you grew up here. Right. right. And you, you, you told me we have to go try these noodles. Yeah. And you, you directed me down Indiana Jones's path <laughs> all the way down to this noodle shop. Is this the easiest way to get here? Yeah, uh, the one, that, the way that I showed you. Yeah, yeah, it's that's easy the, because if okay. you go the other way, it's a, it's a long way. It's around. a long way. Yeah. So what were you, what is this place, and what are we eating? So this is Alium, uh -huh. and they're known for that, and it's uh, pork wonton noodles. Like, you know how long it's been since I had any sorts of noodles? I'm so excited. All right, this is the wonton. So it's not a wonton, well, it is a wonton noodle soup, but the soup is on the side. Yeah. We haven't gotten the soup yet. Pork on top, the wontons, and some sky. It looks like very simple bowl of, uh, oh, thank you, what is this? Uh, it's like a mixture of uh, pork organs. Pork organs. And liver, and I think, uh, I think it's, uh, there's noodles underneath. There's noodles underneath here as well. It's it's another noodle dish. Okay. All right. So should we try? Should, should we mix this, or is, is there any sauce that goes on? What yeah, do we you should do definitely it? have it with the uh, chili sauce. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna mix this. I'm gonna just taste it on its own first. I'm kind of expecting because this is my experience in India. Whenever a dish looks kind of like it doesn't have that much sauce on it, it's actually filled with flavor. So. Mm. Yep. This is really buttery. They, they use butter on this? No. Or oil? It's pork fat. Oh, it's yeah. pork fat. Oh, here's here's your soup, my friend. Wow, no wonder you told me to add some chili. You, you need some you need some chili in here. It's tasty, but it's it's a little fatty. Oh, whoa, what's this? That looks good. That's uh, chili chicken. That looks and smells ridiculously good. Mmm. Mmm. Like that? Yeah, no, oh, yeah, with the chili. The wonton. I love that wonton. That wonton, even the skin, because it's, it's, the skin is like kind of in contact with the pork fat, the skin is already pretty delicious. And you got that nice pork filling on the inside, that's really good. Mm. Love this with the chili. It's a heavy portion of noodles, though. This is actually a half plate. It's half a plate? Yeah. So they have a bigger version? Yeah, they have a full plate. Wow, okay. I can't wait to try this. It smells so ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> My man. This thing's got such a huge garlic flavor. Mmm. A little sweet, slightly crunchy on the outside. Is this more a Hakka food? The noodles, they're more of a Hakka dish. Mm -hmm. And the uh, chili chicken. Yeah. 
sort of a, an evolution of the food to cater to the Indian palate. So it's really spicy and it's mostly fried. Yeah, I, I noticed that a lot of the Chinese foods, um, with Chinese inspired foods here, it, it basically the heat yeah, is up good. and the seasoning is up. And you guys eat a lot of organs here. This is the liver and there's noodles on the inside. I love this. You like that? Alright, I love it. Not only is there um, organs here, but look at that, look at the fat. I love the pieces of fat. This is great, fantastic. Take some of the noodles that's been sitting in this gravy as well. Mm. Mm. You know what else I, I like about the organs in this country? They clean it they really, clean it well. really well. Right? He, he actually, uh, the owner, he actually blanches it. He boils it beforehand, so uh -huh. he really like cleans it. So you don't get the aftertaste. Uh, no, really. I mean, this is as pure as you can get when it comes to organ meats. Got to invite the chili sauce to the party. A little chicken, a little wonton, a little kidney and fat. This is our last dish, and this compared to this, this definitely got a tan. What is this? It's fungamian. It's basically a bunch of soy sauce noodles. I'm a little afraid of this because this looks like it's not only like cooked in soy sauce, it, it took a bath in, in a sauna in soy sauce. <laughs> like, I mean, they look appetizing, but. That's awesome. Wow. You get that beautiful smoke flavor from the from the wok. The soy sauce makes it just a tad sweet. It's got such a you know nice roasted flavor. That's delicious. I feel like everything we ordered today, like if we just ate all of it, we don't need to eat again for the week. I just take a nap afterwards. <laughs> well, let's get some of that. Add a little spice to it. Mm. I feel like it's kind of like eating a a pint of ice cream. Or like a, like a juicy burger. Like, you know afterwards you're not gonna feel that good about it, but you just can't stop eating it, you know what I mean? It's so addictive, this flavor. So how often do you come and eat this? Um, mostly on the weekends. Weekends. And we usually uh, come and have it for breakfast. For breakfast. Yeah. Hey man, you know what? I love noodles for breakfast. Who says you can't have noodles and fried chicken for breakfast? But we'll, we got more food coming up. So what we're going next? Golden Joy. Golden Joy. It sounds very joyous. I don't know, I feel happy listening to the name. But we're gonna wrap this up and more food coming up. So this area here, this is the main street of Chinatown, right? Although I don't really see a lot of Chinese people here. There's not that many shops, it's just kind of like... It's pretty small. All right, we're going to our next restaurant, let's go. The restaurant is still far, pretty far away. Yeah. So uh, Daniel suggested we get some rickshaws. I've never been on one, but sure. Ben's actually sitting in front of us. It's not, not our idea. The rickshaw driver insisted on Ben sitting, he's sitting in the where the rider should be. You okay, Ben? I'm okay. <laughs> I feel pretty weird like sitting on like a, a rickshaw where someone is pedaling because I feel kind of bad for that person. Because you know I eat a lot and I'm kind of heavy. Alright, so we are at Golden Joy. Golden Joy. You told me this is really known for Indian Chinese food. Chinese food. And we got a bunch of dishes coming up. Right. Alright, I'm excited. But this is the first one. This looks, looks to me like an egg drop soup. They call egg it drop the soup? special soup. It's the special soup. It looks like an egg drop drop soup with some meat, some pork, and, uh, and some mushrooms. Mushroom. It looks good. Just like I expected. This, again, is very heavy handed with the, with the seasoning. At least for me. For you, like, is this salty? Not really. Not, not really. Not really. Because the food here, it, we... You're used to it. Yeah, we're used to it. It's, yeah. it's quite uh, seasoned strongly. So. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, this looks familiar. So this is the first time I'm having like a lot of uh, steamed vegetables and I'm actually quite, <laughs> quite excited about this. This is a very traditional Chinese cooking method. Some garlic, a little bit of salt. That's about it. That was a much needed bite. For me. Mm. Ooh, drums of heaven. Oh, drums of heaven. Now, why, why do you call it drums of heaven? Is sounds, that good? Sounds good. It sort of resembles a lollipop, so. It's like a, a chicken lot of lollipop. People call it a chicken lollipop. You guys see here, they basically push all the meat from this bone up to the top and then they fry like that. And honestly, this is something I, I kind of been waiting for because a lot of people have said that I gotta try this and I haven't tried it yet. So, cheers, my friend. Oh yeah. 
whatever they did to this chicken, it needs to be done to all chickens worldwide. Oh, there's more. There we go. They just keep coming, and that's the way I like it. Anyway, so I was saying, like, I, I figured it was just it just the meat on the on the end of the drumstick, and it would just still taste like a fried chicken. But this is like, look at the seasoning. I don't know if you guys can see the seasoning in the batter. This is not just like a simple salt batter dropped into the oil. No, they add a lot of spices. Mm -hmm. That's where the Indian side comes from. Yeah, makes it more interesting than a regular fried chicken. Oh, this is insanely interesting. This is like a two-hour Forrest Gump movie that I enjoy watching every Saturday. I mean. Oh, come on. Oh, this is a delicious piece of chicken. All right, let's try this. Uh, what do you call this again? Credit chicken. So they have uh, noodles along with chicken and uh -huh. they fry it together. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get the credit texture. Look at that. Ooh. This, I really feel like there should be some dipping sauce, right? There's not really any spices on here. So without something, it's just gonna be a little too ordinary. And this looks way too good to just be ordinary. Oh. Oh, much better. This is by far the crispiest piece of chicken I've had. Mm, a chutney. Wow. I, I saw these noodles and I actually tried these on the streets and I loved it because this is kind of like Chinese uh, stir fried noodles. Mm. You definitely taste the smokiness of the wok in these noodles. And although they're dry, you're eating it really for that fragrant, great mouthfeel um, of, the, of the noodle texture as itself. All right, golden shrimp. First off, these things are massive, and secondly, they are crispy. Oh, yeah. Wow, really crispy. This is something else. You need a little dip in something. What, what do you dip that in? Dip that in chutney as well? Yep. The yeah. The green chutney. This is awesome, by the way. Much, much better. Ooh. Eating this, you, you immediately become like Chinese beatboxers, you know? It's like... I mean, that is by far the probably one of the crunchiest fried shrimp I've had. I love the outside dough. I love the crunch. I love the heat. I love the tenderness of the shrimp. With the chutney, fantastic. Man, let me tell you how much I love rice in India. Like, it's just so incredibly fluffy. And this one last dish, this is the, what, chili chicken? Chili chicken. That tastes literally, like, it's the same flavor as the fried chili chicken. It's over in the gravy. Where it's good, but I like the uh, fried chili chicken better because I, I feel like with a little crunch, this thing is actually, is, is a little better. Also, again, with the chutney, this is a all-purpose chutney. This is like the hot oil of India. I think out of all this, that's my favorite. Drums, Drums of heaven, that can be for me any day. That is awesome. I have another one of these things. Like I said, love the convenience of eating this, this drumstick. You literally, you take it. That's beating all the way into my heart. The Indian Chinese food, I feel like it's definitely on a whole different level when it comes to flavoring because there's so much liberal use of spices. So it's really kind of has its own category almost. But hey, lots of spices, tons of flavor, drumstick of heaven. What's not to love? And as always, guys, everything I ate in this video is listed in my description box below. David, thank you one more time for uh, taking me around Chinatown. Although I didn't really see any Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching. Until we eat again, I'll see you later.